Love's like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. And all of a sudden, I am unaware of these things, eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. Oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so.
everlasting love. And we love you too, Lord. Let's show him how much we love him. Let our hearts be turned towards him in every moment of our lives, right? Not just here today, but every day, every moment. That we be mindful of his presence, that he lives in us, and that he loves us so much. We cry, Hosanna.
Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. We love you, Lord. We love your name, Jesus. The greatest name. The greatest name, Jesus. No other name on this earth but yours, Lord, that will bring us through your name alone. Jesus. 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 <laughs> your name. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there's peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Yeah. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like the fire. Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus. Yeah. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, 
burn like a fire. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Everything we need is in your name, Lord. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Hallelujah. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. And Jesus in the streets. And Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Hallelujah Your name is power Your name I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there's peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. The name above every name. I speak Jesus. Say his name, Jesus. I speak Jesus. Hallelujah. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. And Jesus in the streets. And Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for your family. We speak the holy name, Jesus. Come on, shout. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my Jesus from the mountains. Woo! Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. 
name on earth, in this earth, whereby we must be saved. His name alone. His name alone. Because there's power in that name. Power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Resurrection power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Give a shout to Jesus this morning. Resurrection power. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Can you keep that song going during the offering? Can you keep that song going during the offering? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can be seated for just a moment. I just want to welcome everyone. Thank you for coming this morning. We are so glad that you're here. Amen. Are you happy that you're in the house of the Lord this morning? Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms out there. We're uh, so excited that you're here for this special Mother's Day service today. Amen. Amen. Um, at this time, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. On your chair there, there is a white envelope and a blue envelope. Um, if there's not one close by you, we do have some on the tables. Also, if you lift up your hand, maybe some of the ushers can bring you one of those uh, envelopes if you don't have one there by you. But we, we put plenty, I think, out on the chairs there. The blue one is for our remodel project that is currently going on. Uh, if the Lord puts it in your heart, continue to give towards that project. We appreciate it so much. Uh, we have deconstructed the platform. The next, I believe, is the electricity is going in and the new uh, power sources. So the guys have been working hard over there, and we just appreciate your prayers for our project. Amen. Appreciate wisdom for everyone that's working on it. Amen. Amen. And the white envelope is for your regular tithes and offerings. And we appreciate you uh, giving this morning. It keeps the lights on here at Abundant Grace. It keeps everything fixed. Are you enjoying the air conditioning today? Hallelujah. Thank, thank the person who is giving God their tithes and their offerings. <laughs> because thank the Lord. Because it's because of him and because of your giving that Abundant Grace continues. That Abundant Grace continues to meet all of its needs every month. And so I just say thank you. Thank you. And the Lord bless you and multiply it back to you uh, significantly in the name of Jesus. So let's go ahead and put up our offering scripture this morning. I have mine here. It's from 1 Chronicles 16, verse 28 and 29. You can say it with me. Give to the Lord, O families of the people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for these tithes and offerings and project gifts, Lord, that are coming in this morning. Father, I just pray that you would multiply it for the work of the ministry, Father, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I ask you also that you would multiply it back to the sower, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Lord, everything that we have is because of you, and we gladly give it, Father. That 10%, Father, that offering, that tithe, Lord, that you have asked of us. And Father, we give it with a cheerful heart, for your word says that you love a cheerful giver. And Lord, I thank you that you are making their pe your people the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, first and not last, Father. I thank you, Lord. Bless your people, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Pedro is going to bring up our offering bowls. You can put your offering in the front. We also have an offering box in the back. And as always, you can give online if you prefer with a debit card or credit card. So amen. Let's worship as we bring our offering this morning. Let's shout Jesus in the morning. 
nome da Marta. Aleluia. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus shout Jesus shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, the light of fire. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, and Jesus in the streets, and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus we speak your holy name Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah. we worship you God this morning hallelujah On the second Sunday of the month is our missions offering. We don't always take up two offerings, only when it's Mission Sunday. And uh, the offering that we're about to receive is for all of our missionaries worldwide. We have several missionaries in Mexico. One of our missionaries is usually in Siberia, but he's gone over to the Ukraine to help the people there and to minister to them. Amen? Amen. And uh, we have missionaries in Guatemala. We have orphanages that we support, widows' ministries. And so we're going to receive our missions once a month offering. And um, I just invite you to come. You can put it here in the offering buckets or you can put it in the box there in the back. Just mark it offering on your envelope. If you need more envelopes, we have them, like I said, on all the tables. Amen? Amen. So you can go ahead and give. Thank you, worship team. As we're giving our missions offering this morning, we have a video announcement for you.
Amen. <laughs> I want to let you know where the clipboards are for all of the things that you see on the screen today. Uh, Vacation Bible School sign up, and for the t-shirts are on the little wooden table on the left or my right side of the door. All of the barbecue clipboards are on the guest information ta table where all the little gift bags are. And then right behind the camera there where the blue tablecloth is, that's where we have the prayer seminar. And we are going to have water baptism the last Sunday of this month. If you have not been water baptized since you believe, please sign up. It's on a little legal pad over there. And the prayer seminar that uh, Sister Debbie and I are going to be doing, it's there also. Amen? Amen. So be sure and sign your family up and also sign up for a food to bring. And we're going to supply all the hamburgers, hamburger patties. Amen? Well, we have something special that we want to do this morning. And uh, as you know, today is Mother's Day, and we want to honor some special mothers that are here with us today. First of all, we're going to start with the mother who is here with the most children. Is there anybody here that has 10 or more children? Lift up your hand if you have 10 or more children. <laughs> you raised them in your house. <laughs> uh, how about nine? Do we have any mothers here? Nine children? Excuse me? Oh, 12. We didn't start high enough. Well, can you bring your mom up here? Is she able? Welcome. Bienvenido. Uh, this is my mom, Maria Perez. Yes. Huh? Oh, uh, this is my mom, Maria Perez. Uh, she is 90 years old. And <laughs> and she had a total of more than 12 children, but some passed away when we were little. But uh, we didn't, we weren't born yet, but they had passed away. But in total, we have 12. Twelve in the family. I want to be on this one. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Now we're going to do the oldest mother. She might be the oldest mother too, but we'll. <laughs> But we'll pass the second prize along. Do we have anybody that's older than, than 90 years old that is here today? <laughs> anybody? Where? Oh, yes. Do you have your mom here with you today? Okay. All right. Is she able to come up? No? Okay, we'll go back there then. Oh, she's, oh, she's not here. here. Okay. okay. Who's here that is, uh, how about 89? Do we have anyone here that's a mom that's 89 years old? Eighty-eight? Eighty-seven? Eighty-seven? 
Do we have a mom here that's 87 today? How about 86? 86, raise mama. <laughs> Amen. Should we go back there or can she come up here? All right, she is able. Praise the Lord. Ray's mom is so sweet. We'll just have her come up as far as the, so the camera can get a good shot of her. <laughs> a little bit here in the light, okay. We are so glad that you came today. It's good to see you again. Yeah, I'm a grandma, great grandma, and two great and two great grandma. Okay, say that again. Two great grandma. She said she's a, a mom, a grandma, and a great grandma. And great grandma. Amen. And great great grandma. And tell everybody your name. Consuelo Garcia. Consuelo Garcia. Oh, Consuelo Garcia. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming today. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. Okay. Oh, that's good. I can take that. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to dismiss the children for Children's Church. Um, Pastor Rob and Sister Mayeli are going to be right there by the back door. If this is your children's first time, they can follow the other kids with the Pastor Rob over there. We also have our teenagers today that are going to the Family Life Building. So if you are in junior high or high school, you are also released to go to your class this morning with Pastor Simeon and Pastor Lisa. I want to let you know that we do have nurseries for the little ones. We have a two- and three-year-old class. They have an awesome time in there. It's in the annex part of the sanctuary. If you have a little one that needs to go to the annex, um, if you don't know where that is, you can ask any of our ushers and they can take you and show you over there to where the annex is. It's right in the back of the sanctuary. Amen? For some of you, this might be the first time you've been in this building since we started having church over here because we're renovating the sanctuary. The restrooms are on this side where that exit is. They're the little chapel bathrooms. And there's some restrooms in the little kitchen right across right there. There's like two stalls over there and three over there. Amen? Amen. Well, I have a good word for you this morning. It's entitled Mothers of Faith. We're going to look at some of the mothers that are in the Bible. As a matter of fact, there's seven. So we're going to go quick through these moms this morning. Seven mothers of faith. And there's more in the Bible, but these are just the ones that the Lord put on my heart this morning. But I know that you know mothers of faith. My mom was a mother of faith. I know some of you are, are one by the Lord and are here today because you had a mother of faith that prayed you in. Amen. Even when you were out there doing your own thing and were in the world, you had a mother of faith. Amen. Amen. One thing I forgot to tell you is over there in the corner, um, our women's discipleship class has made some really beautiful homemade Mother's Day gifts. So if you haven't uh, gotten your mother something for Mother's Day, please go by there and check out what they have. They're made with a lot of love, and all the proceeds go to the orphanage that we support in Guatemala. Amen? Amen. So mothers of faith. The first mom I want to look at is found in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Now, if you're looking at your app this morning, you have all the scriptures there. I'm probably not going to read every scripture. I'm going to talk more 
about it, but all of the scriptures are there for you to read. But this, in 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7, it says that there was a certain woman who was a wife of one of the sons of the prophets. And um, Elisha was a prophet, and they had these sons of the prophet who were in training to be a prophet. Well, one of their wives, or, or one of the, the men, they passed away and left the wife a widow. And because she was now a widow and she had to support two sons, she didn't know what she was going to do. The creditors were knocking at her door. They wanted her to pay her debt. And she didn't really have any way to pay her debt. You know, things were different back then. Women didn't usually take jobs outside the home. What they did was, you know, take care of their family and make things for the household. You know, they had to make everything from scratch. Aren't you glad, ladies, we don't have to make everything from scratch these days? <laughs> You know, it says when they ran out real quick and made some bread and they slaughtered the fatted, fatted calf, I'm thinking, that had to have taken hours, hours. We've, it wasn't just run down to H-E-B and pop some rolls in the oven. <laughs> but here, she didn't know what she was going to do. How is she going to provide for these boys? And the creditors are knocking. And I know that some of you moms know how that feels. Maybe you've gone through divorce. Maybe you have been widowed also. Maybe for different reasons you are there on your own with your children. And the creditors are calling, telling you your payment's late. It's like, tell me something I don't already know. Help me out. <laughs> your payment's late. We're going to repo your car. We're going to repossess your house. You're going to go into foreclosure if you don't pay. This is where this poor widow woman was with her two sons. But she knew where to turn because she was a woman of faith. When you are a woman of faith, a mother of faith, when hard times come, you know where to turn. And so she turned to the Lord and she turned to the prophet of the Lord because she knew that Elisha could speak for the Lord, that could perform miracles, that he was God's spokesman. So what does she do? She goes to him. She says, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. So he tells her, what do you, what do you have here in the house? I only have a little bit of oil in a jar. That's it. That's all she had. It wasn't good for much of anything. It wasn't enough to do anything with. It doesn't even say she had something to put with it. She just had a little oil. And so this is what the man of God, the prophet, told her. You and your sons go out and borrow as many vessels as you can. Bowls and jars and all kinds of things. As many vessels as you can. And bring them back here. And so he told him, he said, don't just gather a few of them, but gather a lot. Give, gather as many as you can get. So when they gathered as many jars as they could, they went into the house and they shut the door. And he told them, okay, now I want you to take that little bit of oil you have and start filling all of these pots up. All of these jars, everything, start filling it up. And so she began to pour, and she poured, and she, with that little bit of oil, she filled up one vessel, but it wasn't gone. And she filled up another vessel, and it wasn't gone. And she filled up another one, and it still wasn't gone. This was a miracle taking place right in front of her eyes. God, as her provider, providing for her supernaturally when she had no way of knowing how she was going to pay her bills. And then he said, bring me, a, she said, bring me another vessel. The boys are like, well, that's it, mom. We don't have any more vessels. And that's when the oil stopped flowing. 
And the prophet told her, I want you to get all of these vessels of oil. He said, I want you to go out and sell it. Sell the oil. Sell it. And whatever proceeds you bring in, I want you to pay your debt. And that's exactly what she did. He said, go and sell the oil and pay your debt so that you and your sons may live on the rest. So God not only supplied for the debt that she had, but he also supplied for continuing support for her. Maybe until her sons were old enough to work and to help take care of their mom. Some of you moms are in that position. But you're a mom of faith. Remember that you serve a limitless, endless God. You serve a God that is called Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who provides. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. When the creditors call, say, oh, don't worry. It'll be paid. Because you know that the Lord is going to provide somehow, some way. I'm sure everyone has been in that situation where you didn't have enough at least one time in your life. And you had to rely on the Lord. And you saw his provision. Don't give up, moms. You're a woman of faith. The next mom... She doesn't even have a name in the Bible. They call her the Shunammite woman. And this Shunammite woman, it says in the Bible that she was a noble woman. And I thought, wow, I wonder what the other translations say about her, that why they're calling her a notable and a noble woman. It's, they said also it was translated that she was great, that she was wealthy, that she was prominent and had influence, that she was influential. So this was a lady that was well known in the community. Everybody knew who she was. And so the prophet Elisha would go by their house every once in a while. And the Shunammite woman, she said to her husband, hey, let's build a little room for the prophet. Let's put a bed and a table and a little lamp in there. And whenever he comes, let's provide for his needs. She had a generous heart. She had a heart of hospitality. And so when the prophet Elijah would come by there, he would stay at that house. And they would bless him. And they would serve him. And they would feed him and provide whatever he needed. Well, Elisha's heart was just really stirred with love and compassion for this woman and um, her family, her husband. And so he thought, I wonder if she needs something. Maybe I'll, I'll do something great for her to kind of pay her back for what she's done for me. But when the, his servant Gehazi asked her, she's like, I don't, I don't need anything. I don't need that. That's all right. But Gehazi went back and reported to Elijah and said, she doesn't have a child. She's desired to have a child her whole life, and she's never had a child. And that's when Elijah's like, mm, okay, now I know the heart of God for this woman. So this is what Gehazi actually said to him. He says, actually, she has no son, and her husband is old. So he called her. Uh, when he had called her, he stood in the door, she stood in the doorway, and then he said, about this time next year, you will embrace a son. He prophesied to her. He told her, you're going to hold a son about this time next year. And I'm sure she was thinking, wow, I'm kind of old. My husband's really old. <laughs> and she said, no, 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 my Lord, man of God, don't, don't lie to your maidservant. Like, don't get my hopes up. Don't tell me that and it not come to pass. But the woman conceived and she bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elijah had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father to the reapers. 
And he said to his father, oh, my head, my head. And so they carried the young boy back to the house and put him in the arms of the Shunammite woman. And she held him. I'm sure she rocked him and she cried. Her beloved son, whom she'd waited for for so long, and he died right in her arms. You think she would have begun to panic and just be hysterical because her baby boy had died. But no, what does she do? She gets him and she marches right upstairs to that prophet's room. She lays him out on the bed. She comes downstairs and she says, get me a donkey ready. I'm going to see the prophet. And so he's like, why? Her husband's like, why are you going? You know, it's not the new moon. It's not the Sabbath. It's not some special occasion. Why do you want to go see the prophet? She didn't tell him. She said, it's okay. It's well. It's well with my soul. And so she kept it together, which amazes me. And so they saddled it up, and, and off she went, and she told the, the companion that was driving her, he, she, he said, she said, don't slacken the pace for me. Don't slow down for me. And so they went straight to the prophet. When she had saddled the donkey, she said to her servant, don't go, um, don't drive and go forward and don't slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and she went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her after, afar off that he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now and meet her and say to her, Is, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it, husband? is it well with your child? Here again she had another opportunity to express what happened. But what did she say? She answered the prophet, It is well. This was a mother of faith. She knew down deep in her heart that if God gave the baby, God could keep the baby. That she was going to see this boy reach a full, mature life. We don't know exactly how old he was. He said he was a, a young boy, old enough to go out to the field with his father. Maybe he's just starting to learn, maybe between 8 and 10 years old or so. But it's well. It's well. And when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. She just fell down and grabbed him. But Gehazi came near to push her away, his, his servant. <laughs> but the man of God said, let her alone. Her soul is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me why. So she said, did I ask you for a son, my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? <laughs> She's mad. She's kind of upset. He gave her a son, and now God's going to take it away? <laughs> Why did you give me this son if this is going to happen? Then the prophet said to Gehazi, his servant, he said, Get yourself ready and take my staff and go and lay it on the boy. Lay it on his face. And the mother of the child said, She was tenacious. She said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he rose and he followed her. It wasn't good enough that he was going to send the servant with his staff and lay it on his face and raise him up. No, no, no. She said, no, no, you come. <laughs> you promised me this, boy, you get over here with me. We're going. <laughs> now, Gehazi said it ran ahead of him, and he did exactly what the prophet said, and he laid the staff on his face. But the boy didn't arise. And when Elijah, came into the, when, when Elijah came into the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. And he went in and he therefore shut the door behind him, the two of them, and he prayed to the Lord. And he went up and he lie on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands, and stretched himself out over the child, just laid down over him. And the flesh of the child became warm. And he returned, and he walked back and forth, and he paced 
And then he went up again, and then he stretched himself out over the boy again. And then it says the boy sneezed seven times, and life came back into him. He opened his eyes, and he said, call the Shunammite woman. So he called her, and when she came in, he said, pick up your son. So she went in, and she fell at his feet, and she bowed to the ground. And she picked up her son, and she went out. She knew, amen. She knew somehow, some way it was going to be okay because God was involved. I don't know what you're going through with your child, but somehow it's going to be okay because God is involved. Let it be well with your soul. Whatever the problem, whatever the diagnosis, whatever the, the trouble let it be well with your soul because God is involved. He hears the prayers of a faithful mother. Amen. Hannah, the mother of Samuel. Hannah was kind of in the same situation as the Shunammite woman. She didn't have any children at all. And she wanted children so desperately. Her husband Elkanah actually had two wives. He had Panina and her, Hannah. Panina had children, but Hannah didn't have any. But her husband loved her so much. And it said that, that whenever they would go up to the sacrifice, he would always give her a double portion of everything because he loved her. And he wanted to kind of make up for the fact that she wasn't having any children, trying to just express his love to her even though she felt this void inside because she had no child. And Penina, she wasn't very kind to Hannah at all. She would ridicule her and make fun of her and poke at her. So that was really grievous to Hannah. So here they go up to the temple to make the sacrifice. It says then in verse 8, it says, Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? Now, if you're a mom and you grieved for a long time for a child, you know how Hannah feels. Aren't I better to you than ten sons? So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat of the porch of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and she prayed to the Lord and she wept. She wept in great anguish. And Eli the priest was watching her. And she was there just... And praying, nothing was coming out of her mouth. She was moving her mouth, but no words were coming out. Eli didn't understand the anguish of her soul. He didn't understand her deep travail and intercession. He said, woman, are you drunk? She's like, no, I'm not drunk. It's the anguish of my soul. I've been praying to the Lord. She said, O oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him the, to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. So as she prayed, she made a vow to the Lord that if he would bless her with a son, that she would give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and he would, no razor would come upon his head, meaning that he would be a Nazarite, separated unto God. And after he accused her of being drunk, she said, Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. And then Eli the priest answered her and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition. 
which you have asked of him. And she said, let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. This mother-to-be knew how to pursue and to press in in prayer. She she knew how to get to the place of travail where she prayed through to the point that she knew that her petition had been heard by God and the burden of her travail lifted lifted from her. So it says she got up, she ate, and her countenance was not sad anymore. She knew that she had prayed through and that she had the answer in her heart. We, as mothers of faith, many times are going to have to pray through for our children. Whatever they're going through, sickness, disease, hospitalization, accidents, rebellion, drugs, alcohol. We're going to have to be like Hannah. and We're going to have to get on our faith and plead to the Lord in travail. And pour out the anguish of our soul for our child. To see the hand of God move in their life. Verse 19. Then they rose early in the morning and they worshiped before the Lord. And they returned and they came to the house. And Elkanah knew his wife. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and she bore a son And she called his name Samuel, saying, because the Lord, because I asked him from the Lord. Do you know what Samuel means? Samuel means God has heard. It also means name of God. So she named him Samuel because she knew that the Lord had heard her petition. So now the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, Not until the child is weaned, then I will take him, that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. She had made a vow to the Lord, and it was about time for her to keep that vow. But she kept him close and nursed him and raised him. Until a point that he was able to go and live with Eli the priest in the temple. And it says that he served the Lord since he was a little boy. The Lord spoke to him at a very early age. And it said from year to year, I I can just imagine Hannah praying for him all the time. So proud of him when she would go down to the temple. That's my son. He's a priest. You know, Samuel became a mighty prophet of God. He's the one that anointed the first king of Israel and anointed King David. Lived a long and a good life and followed God all the days of his years. But it said that his mom made him a special little coat every year and she would take it to him year after year because he was growing. He was a little boy. And she would visit him. And I know her heart was so proud of him. I know it probably wasn't easy for her to keep that vow, but she did. And he brought um, just wonderful, wonderful things to the people, the children of Israel. Another mom I want to talk to you about today, her name is Jochebed. Jochebed was Moses' mother. You have to remember in the time in which Moses was born that the Pharaoh was not favorable towards the Hebrew children anymore. Joseph had already died. There was a new Pharaoh in power. He didn't much like these Hebrew people. He thought that they were going to multiply and increase to the point that they would eventually take over Egypt. And so he concocted this plan, no doubt a demonic plan, that he would kill all the baby boys by throwing them in the Nile River. First, he told the midwives to kill them, but they feared God and they wouldn't do it. And so he said, 
Y'all go out and gather up all the little boys and throw them in the Nile River, all the babies. And it was during that time. Can you imagine Jochebed and how uneasy she felt the whole time she was pregnant, knowing what was happening, knowing that soon she would give birth? There were no ultrasounds back then. She didn't know if she was having a boy or a girl. Maybe in her heart she thought, I hope it's a girl. I hope it's a girl because I know what they're doing to all the boys. But she gave birth and she had a boy. And when she saw him, the Bible says that she saw that he was a special child. There was something about this baby. She could not allow them to come and find him and take him and kill him. So the Bible says that she hid him for three months, for as long as she could. Because up until about that time, babies sleep pretty much all the time. They only cry when they're hungry. They go right back to sleep. They sleep probably 20 hours a day or more. And so she kept him quiet and she kept him hidden as long as she could. But she got to a point where he was too loud. Maybe he was starting to get mobile. She's like, I, I got to do something. I can't let the soldiers take him. I can't let him be put into the Nile River. And so she had this idea that she would make a little basket and that she would cover it with tar and pitch and she'd make it watertight. And she'd put the baby in there and put the baby in the river and just put the baby in God's hands. That's what she was doing. She trusted God so much to the point that she said, I'm going to put my baby in the river and God, he's yours. I've done all I can do. You take him from here. Now, in this story, there are two mothers. Not only Moses' mother, but the other mother. She was the daughter of Pharaoh. And it says that she was out there taking a bath. And she heard the baby cry. And she sent someone to get the basket. And they brought the basket over and she opened it. And she saw the most beautiful little baby she had ever seen. I'm sure she felt like uh, Moses' mom when she saw the baby. Oh, my gosh. He's so beautiful. That's what I say when I see my little grandson, Noah. He's so cute. <laughs> He's like just adorable. And so Pharaoh's daughter took him out of the basket and immediately her heart was joined to his and she loved him she called him Moses which means drawn from the water she raised him as her own child but get this because uh, Jochebed was able to trust God Miriam his little sister that which was watching I mean his big sister which was watching everything runs over and says do you want me to call one of the Hebrew women to worship, nurse the baby for you and she's like, yeah, sure, go, go get one of them. So what does she do? She goes and gets Moses' mom. And Pharaoh's daughter says, well, I'm going to uh, give you wages. Go and nurse him. I'm going to pay you. And when you wean him, then you can bring him back. And that's exactly what she did. Moses' mom ended up keeping him safely, getting to nurse with him and bond with him and love him and teach him about the ways of God. And then there was a day that she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. And she raised him. Two moms in this story. One who gave up their child because they knew it was the best thing to do. There are some moms here today. You have a child that will see you in heaven or that is being raised by another mother. You'll be reminded with them someday. And then there's another mother here today. You were the one who took the child that you didn't give birth to, but you said, I'm going to love you like a mom, and I'm going to raise you, and I'm going to give you everything that you need I tell you, if you're adopted, don't ever feel abandoned. 
Don't ever feel abandoned. Don't ever let that spirit of rejection come on you. Because you are specially chosen and loved and received by a woman whose heart identified with you so much. Know that you are special. Samson's mother. She had a strong-willed boy to raise. Anybody have any strong-willed boys at home? I did. He's 36 now. <laughs> and he has his own strong-willed boy. I'm like, ha, ha, ha. Payback. <laughs> Payback. But Samson had a mind of his own. He didn't really want to follow God's ways. But before she was pregnant, the angel of the Lord came and told her that she was going to have a son. Now indeed, you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink, and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines." So the woman came and she told her husband, saying, A man of God came to me, and his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God. Very awesome. But I did not ask him where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. And he said, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son now. Drink no wine, nor similar drink, nor eat anything unclean, nor the child, uh, or for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. So the angel of the Lord gave her very specific instructions on how she was to be, why she was carrying him when she was pregnant, and as him to fulfill the Nazarite vow. You're not to cut your hair. You're not supposed to drink wine. You're not even supposed to touch grapes. You're not supposed to defile yourself with a dead body. And Samson did all of these things. And God even had told the children of Israel many years back, don't intermarry with the heathen women of these nations that I am driving out before you. He didn't listen to his parents. He didn't listen to God. He didn't value his Nazarite vow. He broke every one of them. Every one. I'm sure his parents were fit to be tied. <laughs> they were probably like, God, you know we tried. <laughs> you know, we tried to raise him right in, in the ways of the Lord, but, you know, he's a man now. And he's going to have to make his own decisions. Some of us are in that place of the mother and father who did the best that we could. We followed God the best that we could. And now it's our child's turn to do what God said. We can't twist their arm anymore. We can't punish them. We can't take the car away. We can't ground them. We don't really have much recourse, but do we? A mother of faith will pray for her wayward child. She will pray and pray and pray until she sees the will of God in that child's life. Don't give up on your rebellious child. I don't believe that uh, Samson's parents ever gave up on him. And in the end, we know that the Philistines conquered Samson. He was supposed to be the deliverer of Israel. He did deliver them somewhat. But because of his sinful lifestyle, he ended up being captured. His eyes were gouged out. They made him grind uh, grain like an ox. They brought him into the Colosseum where everybody was just so they could make fun of him. And in this lowest point, he asked the little servant boy, would you go put me over there by the pillars so I can just rest on the pillars? And so they took him over there and he was between the two pillars that held up the Colosseum. 
And that very moment, he had a repentant heart. And he said, God, remember me. Let my strength return and let me die with the Philistines. And the strength of the Lord came upon him as before. And he pushed the pillars and the whole Colosseum fell. And it killed everybody inside, including Samson. And the Bible says in Samson's death, he killed more Philistines than he did altogether in the whole time that he was a judge of Israel. Whatever's going on with your child, pray for them. And know that it's not necessarily your fault. Sometimes we can do the best that we can do in the situation that we are in. And they still rebel. Put him in God's hands. Train up a child in the way that they should go. When they're old, they will not depart from it. What did Samson do at the end of his life? He called on God. Your child will call on God in their great need because you put that in their heart. And our last mother this morning, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Can you imagine having the responsibility of raising the Messiah? It's a lot of responsibility. But in Luke chapter 1, Mary receives a visit. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. And then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? Remember, Mary was only betrothed or engaged to Joseph. She had never had any kind of sexual relations with him or anyone else for that matter. But she was old enough to know where babies come from. <laughs> she was like, how's this going to happen? I don't know a man. I'm not married yet. I've never been with anyone. How am I going to have a baby? I mean, this could have been very scary. They think that maybe she was around 14 or 15 years old at the time. This could have been very scary to her. You know, something so unfamiliar. But she was willing to do it because the Lord asked her, told her, Gave her that favor of carrying the Messiah. And so the Lord asked, answered her question, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Patty, can you come up and uh, play something? Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who has been barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. And then Mary said, get what Mary says. I just love this. She says, behold, your maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. She agreed. She probably didn't have to agree. <laughs> She was chosen, and she agreed. She knew what that meant, that being pregnant and being unmarried, that she could be stoned to death by the law of Moses. Not only that, her child would be ridiculed for not having a father. Her child would endure persecution because he was born out of wedlock. Or she conceived him out of wedlock. 
She knew what it meant, but she carried him anyway. And there are some moms here today. You weren't expecting to be pregnant, but you were. And you endured the shame because you weren't married. People looked down on it, frowned on it because you weren't married. But you said, I'm not going to abort this baby. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with it. I'm going to carry it. I'm going to love this baby because it's a gift from the Lord. It doesn't matter where children come from. They are always a gift from the Lord. Always. You know, not every child is born into the best circumstances. But that doesn't make you um, not special. You are special. So Mary had faith to believe that God would do what he said that he would do through the angel. Mary had faith to endure. She had faith to do whatever it took to bring Jesus into this world. She had the faith to raise the child of God. You have faith today to raise the child of God. You might not be carrying the Messiah, but the one you carry and the one who sits next to you, the one you feed at your table every day, you have faith to raise them in the ways of God because you're a mother of faith. God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. On the days you don't even get a shower, you know what I'm talking about because the baby has to nurse every two hours. The other one you got to run to school. The other one you got to pick up from soccer practice. And so you just put on your workout clothes and you just go. Ponytail, no makeup, sweaty. Do I have any moms that can identify with me on that one? <laughs> I know. Suzanne has little ones. My daughter has a little one. And you know what? Some days I'll just say, you know what? I'm going to come over so you can take a shower and get ready. Because some days moms don't even get to get ready. They might not be going anywhere, but, you know, you'd like to at least take a shower. But you have the faith to raise a man of God. You have the faith to raise a woman of God. You're raising them. They sit next to you every meal at the table. Pour into their lives all the faith that you carry because you only have them for a short time because they've been lent to you from the Lord. Just like Hannah said that her child had been lent to the Lord all the days of his life. Because one day they're going to grow up and they're going to leave the house. Don't be sad. If they grow up and leave the house and can support themselves, they get married, they have children, be happy. Give yourself a little pat on the back and give God a high five. <laughs> because you did it. You did your job. It's our job to make them self-sufficient and independent people who love God. I never understood why people were so sad when they had empty nest. I mean, it's a little, a little bit sad at first when you don't have any children at home anymore. You know, my husband's like, uh-uh. It's like, woohoo! But you, you're going to raise them. You're going to raise them in the ways of the Lord. And the Bible says that when they get old, they will not depart from it. Even if they're taking that lap out in the desert right now, don't give up. Maybe your child's like Samson. He wants to do his own thing. <laughs> don't give up. Keep praying because you're a mother of faith. And everything that you pour into them will reap huge dividends for them in their life. Amen? Amen. We want to do something special this morning. 
Could I have all of our moms stand up, please? I want you to stand up. If you were pregnant and you were a mom, but you lost your baby with miscarriage or abortion or stillbirth, you are still a mom. Your baby's in heaven and they are waiting for you. So if that's you, you stand also. This day's for you. And we want to give all of you a gift. We have roses and some really pretty abundant grace uh, book markers that we want to give. So gentlemen, all the ladies that are standing are our moms. And you're going to give each of them a rose and a book marker this morning. And they're, they're coming, so just bear with this for a moment. Can you sing something while they pass those out? stronghold shine through the shadows burn like the fire you're gonna get both a rose and a bookmarker so stay standing until you get both and then you can sit down Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness, over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, Jesus in the mountain, Jesus in the streets, 
Jesus and the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is really. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. Do you ladies over here need something? No, you have it already? Do you, you have both already? Okay. All right. Did everyone, all the moms get both this morning? Good. Now, if we have some extra, which we may have some extra, you're welcome. Any of the ladies that are here are not a mom, you are welcome to one too. Amen. If you would stand with me this morning. I want to invite our prayer partners to come to the front. We have very loving prayer partners. They can identify with you with whatever you're walking through. Many of these prayer partners are moms themselves. They've raised children. They know what it's like when a child goes astray. They've raised the strong-willed boy. Some of you may be raising your grandchildren, and you may need some prayer for that today. But I want to invite anyone who wants prayer today, especially you moms, come up to these prayer partners and let them pray with you and identify with you in whatever you may be going through with your child. They'll stand in faith with you and pray today. In just a minute, we're going to dismiss the service, and uh, my husband and I will be over in the coffee stop, our little coffee bar area there. And if this is your first time here at Abundant Grace, we would love to meet you personally. We invite you to come over there with us, and um, we have a gift bag for you. And we'd love to just shake your hand and get to know your name and your face and greet you personally today. Amen? Amen. So if you need prayer, go ahead and make your way forward today. I want to bless you today. Say it with me. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank you for coming. Please get prayer if you would like today, and we'll meet you over in the coffee stop. Thanks, babe.